continuing on in section 1.3, we want to actually do an example here where we get a chance to use our second version of the fundamental theorem of calculus. We had a first version which told us that when you're integrating some function, then you can find an antiderivative of that function and evaluate it in order to compute the integral. Our second version of the fundamental theorem of calculus said that if you have a function which is defined by an integral, it's fairly easy to take the derivative of it. For our first example here, we're looking at the function uh, f of x equals the integral from 0 to x of 1 over square root of 1 plus t to the fourth dt. And we have another function g of x, which is the integral from 0 to x cubed of 1 over 1 plus t to the fourth dt. So uh, with this first function, we notice that, uh, let's see, so we have an integral and our fundamental theorem of calculus is stated in terms of a small fun or a function little f of t. So we want to notice here that the little f of t is the integrand. So for these two functions, big F of x and big G of x, our little f of t is going to be equal to 1 over square root of 1 plus t to the fourth, since this is the integrand in both functions. So for part a, when we're computing the derivative of big F of x, what we want to do is we want to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus, and the fundamental theorem of calculus directly applies to big F of x, because the fundamental theorem of calculus says that uh, the derivative of the integral from any number to x of some function with respect to t uh, is exactly equal to that function evaluated at x. So uh, for us, we have this exact setup. We are interested in computing big F prime of x here, which is the derivative of the integral from 0 to x of 1 over square root of 1 plus t to the 4 dt. And my fundamental theorem of calculus uh, directly applies to this situation. I've written the exact same sequence of symbols here that I have here. Just instead of writing this little f of t, I've got uh, an actual description of the function. And so what we can conclude is that this derivative is equal to the integrand evaluated at x instead of t. So this is going to be 1 over the square root of 1 plus x to the 4. Great. So we want to then think about what's the difference between our function big F and our function big G. And we notice that the difference is the upper limit of integration uh, for big F is x on its own, and the upper limit of integration for g is x cubed, or it's an expression in terms of x. So if we want to compute g prime of x, we think, well, maybe it would be really easy if uh, instead of x cubed, we just had an x as the upper limit of integration. We just did that problem. Um, but we don't. We have an expression instead of x. And those who took uh, 251 with me will remember that this is kind of the way that we want to think about uh, when we need to use the chain rule, when we have an inside function and an outside function. So maybe what we want to do is first remember what the chain rule says. Uh, I'll state it in terms, of, uh, in terms of g's here. So the chain rule says if I want to take the derivative of g with respect to x, and maybe g is a function of u, uh, I can think about this as the derivative of g with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. This uh, first quantity here is the derivative of the outside. The second quantity here is the derivative of the inside. And chain rule says take the derivative of the outside, multiply by the derivative of the inside. So with big G here, if I want to think about it as a function of u instead of a function of x, I'd have the integral uh, from 0 to x cubed of this 1 over square root of 1 plus t to the 4 dt. Instead of x cubed, I want to think about that upper limit of integration as a variable on its own. So we're going to call that u, 1 plus t to the 4 dt. So here I have uh, u equal to x cubed. So what I need to do then is I need to, to compute the derivative of g with respect to x. 
which is exactly what it means to be g prime of x, then what I need to do is take the derivative of g with respect to u and multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x. So here I have that the derivative of g with respect to u, well, here's my function g in terms of u, and its derivative, as we just found from the previous problem, is going to be the inner function here, the integrand, evaluated at u instead of at t. So that first component is 1 over 1 plus u to the 4. But then I need to multiply by the derivative of u with respect to x. Uh, we have that u equals x cubed, and so taking the derivative there, du dx, is going to get me 3x squared. So we need to multiply by 3x squared here. And there's a slight problem with our answer, which is that we've got a u in it, so we want to somehow get rid of that u. And the way we do that is by replacing u by its expression in terms of x. So we have u equals x cubed, so this is going to be 1 plus x cubed to the 4 times 3x squared. You certainly can simplify it a little bit more than this, but there's not really a reason to do that. Once, we've, once we have an expression for g prime of x, we can call it a day and say that we are done with this problem.